Yeah, go on. You heard about Howard? Yeah. I can't get my head round it. How old was he? Fifty. What's that got to do with anything? OK, will do. Thanks. I don't know how you did it, Mrs Tembe, and at such short notice. Well, uh, yes, it was very short mm -hmm. notice. Uh, but I think it is uh, important that we have experienced staff on reception. Yes. You know, at this difficult time. Mm. That, that will be her. <clears throat> Mrs. Tenby. Yes, Ten. Words cannot express. I was so shocked, so, so shocked when I heard. I was distraught. But then when Mrs. Tenby asked for my help, I thought, Valerie, you must put your grief aside. The mill needs you, your ex-colleagues and friends, they need you. No matter the personal cost in loss commission. Terry? I'm in medical sales these days. Oh. With a sideline in kitchen equipment. Not for the same company, obviously. Yeah. Well, we are very grateful. Yeah, yes. Excuse me. Well, I will be in well, the practice manager's office if, if you need me. Are you two heading to the shopping precinct? Yes, Sarge. We've had reports of a vagrant harassing members of the public. Great. Sounds like Gerald Higgins by the description. Really? He tends to steer clear of people. He he needs a handout. He's probably blown his welfare on that brain rot he pulls down his neck. I'll leave you to look into it. Oh, Sarge. Do you know what's happening with Howard's funeral? I'd like to go. It's tomorrow, St Bernadette's. If you need time off, have a word with the duty sergeant. Thanks. I really want to be there. He was a good bloke. Yeah, he was. It doesn't feel real. Ready? And, of course, we were colleagues at the PCT. I'm devastated. I'm oh, as devastated as Emma. I don't see why Emma should be more upset than me. I knew I had much longer. You weren't in a relationship with him at the time he died, though. Howard and Emma... Oh. Oh, I had no idea. Oh, how tragic. Dying just as he found true happiness. I always knew there was something between those two. Uh, Miss Pigman! There are patients waiting. Hey. You okay? Not really. I'll come home. No, no, you don't have to. No, I want to. As soon as my morning surgery's done, okay? Thank you. Bye. What's the matter? He's had a skinful. He doesn't normally start drinking this early. Something must have upset him. Listen to me. Don't <laughs> make me arrest you. If I get any more reports of you harassing people, I'll be back, and you'll spend the next 24 hours in a cell. Do you understand? Now get back to your pit. Sleep off whatever it is you've drunk. <laughs> Do you think it's safe to leave him? Maybe we should call an ambulance. He's in a right state. He spends most of his waking hours in various degrees of intoxication. He's not sick, he's wasted. In every sense of the word. Oh, I've interrupted your lunch. No, it's been sat there for half an hour. Just can't face eating it. Okay. Please try. It's really important after what your body's been through. Maybe later. Okay. 
I called Amelia. Oh. I know, I know. You were right. What did she say? Not much. She was cold, distant. She's not coming to the funeral. Well, you can hardly blame her. He was her father. Can't she forgive him even in his death? I just wanted something good to come from all of this. Give her time, you know. The funeral's tomorrow. I'm sorry. It's just that everything feels so hopeless. You know, I mean, Saskia's waiting for me to, to select some hymns and, and organise the readings and contribute to the eulogy. I can't even believe that he's dead. Never mind, talk about him in the past tense. Okay, all right, okay. We will do all those things together, okay? Good. First things first, okay? Cup of tea. We were here last week, giving security advice. Such a shock when someone you know dies suddenly. It's poor family. I mean, how do you come to terms with that kind of loss? What are you saying? A long, slow death from some hideous disease is better. Oi! Oi! What are you doing? Get off me! Right. Yes, yes. I am arresting you for threatening behaviour under Section 5 of the Public Order Act. You do not have to say anything. It may harm your defence if you do not mention one question. Something which you Come later on. rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You're arresting him. Got a problem with that? Get his bike. <clears throat> and if you change your mind about the party, you know where I am. You're not the nurse. No. Um, can I help you? Get back! Help! Help! Look, it's all right. Hey, I'm not going to hurt you. Get down. What? Lie on the floor. I'm arresting you. What? I know what you're after. What? Paper towels? Do I look stupid? No. You, you seem distressed. Would you like to talk about it? I'm a very good listener. No, you can't distract me with idle chit-chat. All the drugs are locked up. You want drugs? Help! Look, I can help, OK? I'm a doctor. You are a juvenile delinquent. No. Dr Veer. Help! Miss Pittman. But after Dr Veer, what on earth is going on? Is here. Heston. I don't know what to say. If there's anything I can do to help, anything at all, just... Thank you. Got a book of condolences from the Mills. Very touching comments. Can I, um, can I get you a cup of tea? That would be lovely. Button it, you're in enough trouble as it is. Everything all right? Fine. Dominic Jennings. I've arrested him for threatening behaviour. He was cycling on the pavement, and when I challenged him, he was abusive. Yeah, you pulled me off my bike. Shut up. Dominic, have you been in trouble before? No. I'll check. No, no. And you're at university. Yeah. Come on. Go in. Close the door. You didn't seem very happy out there. What happened? Did she pull him off his bike? She, she may have been a bit heavy-handed. She's not normally. What? She's not normally what? Owen. Sorry, it's just... 
I can't stop thinking about Howard, and she's so unmoved. It's like her hackles rise every time I mention his name. If she doesn't want to talk about him, don't push it. It seems so heartless, like it didn't mean anything. He was a mate. It's probably just her way of dealing with it. Everyone reacts differently. She has been on edge all morning. Well, there you go. But you do know you can talk to me. Thank you, Sarge. OK. Dr Veer, <laughs> please accept my humble apologies. I've never arrested a doctor before. It, it was an easy mistake to make. I should have realised you'd remember a staff. Oh, well, it's quite small. <laughs> Can you even read it from there? Yeah, just about. But a visually impaired person might struggle. Oh, well, that will never do. I mean, we could be breaking all sorts of EU regulations. I'll do a size comparison with the checkout girl at Sainsbury's, cos they're a big national chain. They're bound to have their dimensions right. Oh, 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 wait. Where, where are you going? To get something to eat. My turkey wrap is no longer fit for human consumption. No, th that was my fault. Um, please, let me buy you another one. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I you, wouldn't hear of it. Uh, Miss Pittman, uh, Dr Veer, I'm going to need you both to work tomorrow. Morning, what, what about the funeral? Love divine and mourning has broken. Excellent choices. We think so. Well, thank you. We're struggling a bit with the eulogy. You're giving the eulogy? No, no. Uh, one of his army friends. But the family have asked me to say something about his time at the mill. And everything I come up with is... Well, it sounds so trite. Preston's well, good with words, you know. You'll help. Oh, yes. I mean, if you're looking for inspiration, how about the... Book of Condolences. There we go. Aha. Um, uh -huh. Truly a man of integrity, he ran a tight ship. Stick to the carriageway in future. Cheers. Yeah. Well, I don't think he'll be doing that again. You worked a fair bit with Howard, didn't you? DCI driver, she's going to say a few words at the funeral when she's collecting anecdotes from his colleagues. I haven't got any, sorry. Will you be attended? I'm on duty. Well, we can sort something out if you want to go. That won't be necessary. My help? No, it won't. Nadia, a close colleague has just died. Nobody comes out of that unaffected. What are you trying to say? Pulling a young lad off his bike. Not like you. Excuse me. Neither rhyme nor reason. Neither rhyme nor reason. He had an aneurysm. I mean, something must have made it rupture. There's no point tormenting yourself with the whys and the wherefore. No, it's my fault. I mean, he was stressed. He was, he was stressed about me. We've been through this, Emma. It was not your fault. Well, who then? The woman in the car park who, who blocked him in. I mean, does she know what she did? I mean, she, she should be prosecuted. Oh, my. His, his blood pressure must have been sky high. I mean, we were stuck in traffic forever. And, and then there were the roadworks. I mean, whoever put those in place, they were incompetent. There should have been a diversion. Emma, you're not thinking rationally. I am perfectly rational. OK, let's be logical about this. The aneurysm could have happened at any time for the most innocuous of reasons. Blowing his nose, for example. The fact that he had it in hospital meant he had the best chance of survival. But why did he have an aneurysm? Ask yourself that. I mean, was it a lifetime of stress in the army serving his country and then a career in, in NHS administration? I mean, you above all people know how difficult it is to run a surgery. It was too much for one man to bear. Howard made his choices, as we all have to. Oh, so... Now it's his fault. I'm not saying that. You're wrong! You're wrong! Emma. Got any plans for the weekend? Why don't you keep a look out for our fly posting friend? I'll just go check on him. Gerald? Gerald? Gerald, it's PCS or Kitson. Oh, what'd you wake him up for? I think he needs help. He doesn't want help. What if he's got alcohol poisoning? He's been poisoning himself for years. 
Just, he's not bothering anyone. Just leave him to sleep at all. They won't thank you in A&E. It's funny how drunken deadbeats like him outlive decent people who actually contribute something to society. Just to be on the safe side. Yeah, there he is. <sighs> Stop right there. Hey! Officer! Hey! You are under arrest. Oh! Gerald! Gerald! Gerald, speak to me. G Gerald, can, can you say your name for me? Gerald! You're supposed to back me up. You said you're faffing about with some drunken deadbeat. I'm sorry I wasn't there. I think he's had a stroke. Yeah. And if anyone needs a lift, there'll be plenty of room in my car. I'm sorry. There's no need. I'll be back in a bit. Subject to your approval, of course. Thank you. Aston, would you do a reading? I'd be honoured. A poem or something, but nothing too preachy. Is there anything else I can do for you? Well, the family want to know the number of mourners from the mill and the PCT. I'll look into that. What about Howard's police calling? I think Rob's looking after that. I think they're doing their own special tribute. I didn't realise how popular he was. Well, Howard wasn't your average special. <laughs> no. Do you think Mrs Tambu would sing? I'm sure she will. Would you like me to ask her? Please. Do you have a particular song in mind? <sighs> We'll sort something out. Thank you. I'm, I'm afraid I'm barely functioning. You're doing fine. I just don't want to let him down. You won't. What's the latest on our friend Gerald Higgins? He's undergoing assessment in St Phil's. Alcohol related, I assume? Looks like he was sober when he collapsed. The paramedics reckon it was a stroke. Sober? You're saying that he wasn't drunk while he was arresting pedestrians? He was trying to get help. That was five hours ago. You did speak to him? Yes. So how come it's taken so long? His symptoms mimicked intoxication. We made a mistake. PCSO Kitson wanted to call an ambulance this morning. I refused. Because he's an alcoholic vagrant? Are you injured? It's nothing. I fell over. You couldn't ride your bike back. Get it checked out with the doc. I would show you my tribute, but Heston's gone off with the condolences book. Has anyone mentioned a dress code? Not to me. Uh, black's safest, I suppose. But these days you can never tell. I have seen mourners decked out in all the colours of the rainbow. <laughs> Did you hear about that funeral in Brighton where the mourners all came dressed as furry animals? Really? Yeah, it was on the news. There was an unfortunate incident at graveside. Squirrel Nutkin head butted Jemima Puddle Duck. Some issue over the final resting place of a first edition Peter Rabbit. Apparently, the deceased was a big Beatrix Potter fan. So, how are things at the campus? You must be really busy with all those freshers registering. Um, it's winding down now. Most of them signed up last week. Mm. Yeah, you do get stragglers, though, don't you? So, what are you doing over here? Oh, um, Mrs T called me in for a briefing. Huh? You think she'd realise the importance of decent cover on reception at the beginning of a new academic year? I think Al and Ish can cope till I get back. Yeah, she must have a lot on her mind. Stepping into Howard's shoes, that is a big ask. It is, but she's doing a grand job. Mm, for a grieving receptionist promoted beyond her capabilities at a moment's notice. No, she really is. She's calm, considerate, organised. And she does relish the extra authority. Uh, Doc wants me to have an X-ray. 
Get Owen to drive you. Um, I'd like to apologise for my conduct today. It's been, um... I've been out of order. And I would like to attend Howard's funeral, if possible. And make a donation. Come in, come in. There is no shame in getting upset. No, it's not that, it's just that. I, um, <clears throat> giving in to any emotion uh, at the moment is a slippery slope. In some ways I envy him. Not that he's died, of course not. I, I envy the way he went. Quickly. Not knowing anything about it. Not suffering. He's had some, had some bad news recently. My mum's been a bit wobbly on her feet for a couple of years and bit worse these last few months. Um, <clears throat> she started behaving oddly, having some problems with her memory. She's just been diagnosed with Huntington's disease. Oh, Nadia. I am so sorry. <clears throat> it gets worse. It's hereditary. <laughs> I've got... 50% chance of developing it, too. But you don't know? I can have a genetic test to see if I carry the gene. What are you going to do? You know, if the test shows that I carry the gene, I'm not sure I could live with that. But, of course, you, you could very well be perfectly healthy. Yeah. And if I refuse the test, I spend my life needlessly worrying. I'm developing symptoms every time I drop a spoon or forget why I walk in the room. And that's me at the Salesperson of the Month Awards. I suppose you won. Hmm. Oh, I'd forgotten about that dress. I could wear that for the funeral. I mean, there is a bit of bosom showing, but not enough to cause offence. Yeah, not unless you're really religious. Miss Pittman. Maybe I should wear a suit. There will be a lot of military types there and policemen, wall-to-wall -wall gold braid. <laughs> no, I think I'll stick with the dress. I don't want to be mistaken for a WPC. I wonder if Barry will be there. How about the funeral? Accessories. Accessories. If it's good enough for Royal Ascot, it is good enough for Howard's funeral. I am going to need you here tomorrow. We, uh, we cannot all go to Mr. Bellamy's funeral. Well, can't you get a temp in? You are the temp. Yes, but I'm a close friend. And that is why I must ask you to make a great sacrifice. Mr. Bellamy kept this surgery open through thick and thin, through fire and pestilence. Who better? to keep the show on the road than a, a dear and treasured friend. And he'd be ever so proud of you. You have putting the patience first. Well, well, it is what he would have wanted. I'll do it for Howard. Excellent. Come, please. How's the shoulder? Nothing broken. Just torn muscle. How's he? Some brain damage, but the consultant reckons he'll pull through. He'll need a lot of support. Should have listened to you. I should have been more insistent. Sorry about today. All of it. Ready? Give me five minutes. Meet you in the car park. Sure. Sorry, Gerald.
got to Wheeler? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to go ahead with the counselling with a view to having the test. Yes, I'm sure. If something's waiting for me around the corner, then I want to know. Thanks. What about this? It's perfect. Really? Oh, it's the one we're, we're done here. I promise. Which is good timing, cos, you know, dinner's ready. Bit of comfort food. Yeah, it's a shame Heston couldn't stay for dinner. After everything he's done today. What are friends for? Come on, I'd really like to see you eat. Yeah, yeah, I'll be down in a minute. Not that you knew him. I did. He hired me. I came back for me. An honest man. Here lies at rest. Oh, you think I should be in there, don't you? Like I was with Sam, sitting in the front row. My own. Tensions are high as Phil returns at a terrible